About a year ago, I made a video where we talked about any unknown and never in TypeScript and how to think about those different types, what they mean and how to use them. I've learned some new things about these types in the last year and specifically how they relate to the ideas of covariance and contravariance in TypeScript. Now, I'm going to be honest, this is kind of a, a deep nerdy rabbit hole here and you can work a long time in TypeScript, possibly your whole career and never actually need to know about covariance and contravariance. However, there are a few tips here that I think might be helpful. So let me show you what I've learned. One of the ways I went down this rabbit hole was looking at the built-in types for parameters and return types. One thing that might surprise you about these built-in types is that they use any in both the arguments spot and in the return spot. And why that's the case, I can't really say for sure. I imagine they were written that way before unknown and never came along, and I guess they just haven't been changed. So the kind of opening question for me was, can I change these to not use any? At first it seems like, well, unknown should be the right thing to put in place of these, right? You can think about unknown as the set of all possible values. And so really, if we pass some value t to parameters or to return type, then it should be a function that can take really any set of arguments, we don't care what, and can return anything. Again, we don't care what. And so it feels like I should just be able to replace all of these any's with unknown, right? So let's go ahead and do that. And we already have one problem that we'll get into in just a second here. A rest parameter must be of an array type. Okay, that one is pretty straightforward to solve. Fine, it's a rest parameter, right? Where we've got our rest argument here, we've got our rest operator here, so this needs to be an array. That's fine, we can say, it's an array of unknown arguments. And that's what we get in all three of these cases. So that makes a lot of sense. But now these should work just fine, right? Let's define a function type here. Maybe we have function one, which will say takes some string and it returns a number. So let's get the parameters of function one. Well, we already have a type error here. So let's see. Function one does not satisfy the constraint of args of unknown array to unknown. Parameter s and args are incompatible. Unknown is not assignable to type string. This is kind of the crux of what confused me when I first started down this path, because it seems to me like this error is backwards. Think about these type arguments. Think about these types where we have a generic parameter here uh, as another function call. If parameters is a function call, it takes an argument t that must be a, a function that matches this type, right? And so if we're saying the function type that we want to match is something that takes anything, we don't care what, and returns anything, we don't care what, then a function that takes a string and returns a number should be fine. But it doesn't say here that our type string is not assignable to our type unknown, where unknown is the required argument and string is the argument we're giving it. Instead, it actually has it the other way around, right? Type unknown is not assignable to type string. Now, the solution to this problem lies in understanding a little bit about the ideas of covariance and contravariance. Covariance and contravariance are terms that have applications in a couple of different fields, but in computer science specifically, they describe the relationships of types and their subtypes as we uh, wrap them in containers. And let me show you what I mean by this. Let's talk about strings. We don't need to define this as a new type. String already exists as a type. But what we can define is another type that is a string union. So let's say we have a type of role, right? Where the variations that we could have here are admin or uh, let's just say user. Let's say we need a string. Can a role fulfill the place of a string? Yes, it can because role is a subtype of string, right? So if we have a function here that, I don't know, is called greet to use a super basic example, I can call greet with some random string. But if I have a role, I can also call greet and pass it a role because role is a subtype of string. So what happens if instead of just taking a single name, greet now needs to take an array of strings, right? It's gonna return multiple strings. Well, we can of course wrap our individual string here in an array and that works. With role here, maybe we can update role uh, r itself to be an array of multiple strings here. And if we make the value here to be an array of multiple roles, we can pass r to greet still because an array of roles is still a subtype of an array of strings. And so what this tells us is that array of t as a type container, as a type that wraps other types is we can say covariant over T. And whenever you have a covariant wrapper like this, then if A is a subtype of B, then container of A is a subtype of container of B. Now, if this seems pretty straightforward to you, you're right, this is kind of what you expect from most generic types, 
right? Arrays work this way as we've just seen, but so do promises, so do maps and sets. Even something like omit in TypeScript also behaves covariantly over T. Now, contravariance is kind of the opposite, I guess you could say, of covariance. And the examples for contravariance often feel very convoluted, but we're going to do our best here. Let's look at this greet function here and say, we're actually going to call this a greet anyone. And then let's just copy this. And we're going to say specifically, this other function is for greeting a user. Now let's say we have a function here that is going to uh, register a user. Let's assume there are other arguments we're going to ignore here. But one thing that you can do when you're registering users is choose how you want to greet that user. And to do so, you can pass in a greet function. So this greet function, because this is specifically for users, it's going to expect a role and we don't really care what it returns. Now, maybe let's simplify this just a little bit. Let's change this to uh, just be a role. We can remove one level of complexity here. The question now is, which one of these functions can we pass to register user. It expects a function that takes a role. So it feels obvious that greet user here is something that we could pass. The question is, can we pass greet anyone? Role, of course, is a subtype of string. And we've seen that arrays and even just basic functions are covariant over T. And so it seems like because string here is wider than role, right? It's a broader type. It has more values that it can be. Then probably it doesn't make sense that we could pass greet anyone into register user, right? It's too broad of a type. However, this isn't exactly the case. So we can say register user. And of course, we can say greet user. That works just fine. We can also pass it greet anyone. What's going on here? Why can we pass it greet anyone when we need something that takes a role specifically? Well, this is where contravariance comes in. A function that takes a function that takes a T is actually contravariant over T. What that means is the relationship between the types is reversed. Think of it this way. Register user here is asking for a function that it knows can take a role. And greet user, of course, can take a role. But greet anyone can also take a role, right? Because any role is just a string. And so even though we are asking for something that supports a narrower type, we can actually pass something that accepts a broader type and know that any of our narrower values are still within that broader type. Now, if we reverse this and change this to string, what we'll see is we actually can't pass a roll through. And initially this seemed backwards to me, but hopefully uh, this makes a little bit more sense now that we've talked through it in this way. This is a function that says I need to be able to take any string. It's easy to think that a function like this could be covariant, right? Where if it accepts an array of strings, it works for an array of roles, but just because it takes a function of string, doesn't mean it works for a function of role. If this function needs to be able to take any string, I can't pass it a function that accepts only roles. And so this is where we can come back to our parameters example here and return type actually behaves the exact same way. The problem here is that we're saying this takes a function that could take anything at all unknown. We don't know what the arguments it supports are. It could take pretty much anything at all. And we're saying, no, we're going to pass you a function that accepts only a string. No wonder it doesn't work. The metaphor that works for me really well in my mind is think of these, this function that you're passing in as a box. Maybe think of parameter as you're helping a friend move, right? And you're this parameter or your friend is this parameter function. And your friend says, hand me a box that can take anything at all, right? Unknown array. This box should be able to fit any number of anything I have in my house. And what do we pass it? We pass it a box that can fit only a single string. Well, no wonder it complains. The way to make this work is to kind of go in the other direction. Instead of saying we want to pass string because string is a subtype of unknown, we need to reverse the relationship. What is a subtype of string? What is a narrower type than string? And really, in the case of parameters or return type, what is a narrower type than pretty much any type we could pass in? Never. Exactly. We need to change args here to be never. And now this works. And doesn't that feel backwards in your head? Doesn't that feel so weird to say this is a function that it should expect no arguments at all or an array of never arguments and we can pass it an array of strings. The moving box example really helps me here because think of it like this. You are asking for a box that doesn't need to fit anything at all. I just need a box, but I don't really need to fit anything in that box. Kind of a weird requirement if you're moving, but you're asking for a box that doesn't need to fit anything. And if I give you a box that can fit something, 
that's okay. Because essentially your commitment is, I'm not really going to try and put anything in this box. And so you can accept any box at all. Now, what about the return type here? Well, this is an interesting thing about functions, I think, is that a function is kind of both covariant and contravariant. It's covariant over its return type, but it's contravariant over its arguments. And so we need to accept a narrower type as the arguments, but the return type is kind of like array or map or omit or promise. It is covariant over the return type. And we can actually look at another example of this. Maybe let's say with our greet functions here, uh, greet is going to return a string and maybe greet user will instead uh, return a role. And if we change register user to here to be a function that returns a string, you can see a function that returns a role is okay because the return type is a covariant property, maybe we can say, of the function. Of course, if we change this instead to be a function that returns a role, we should see that a function that returns a string doesn't work because role is a much narrower type than string. And because we're covariant, we need an actual sub, we would need a subtype of role to be returned and not a super type. Maybe we could fix this by saying greet anyone specifically returns user, right? So that would be a subtype of role. And if we do that, then this would work just fine. I hope this actually makes some sense. I'll be honest, I am at like over half an hour uh, for just recording this video right now. I guess there's going to be a lot of chopping up. So hopefully this feels like it comes together in a cohesive video that explains why you would put never as the parameters and unknown as the return type if you are going to remove any from both parameters and return types. Let me know if this made any sense at all in the comments. If you have other metaphors that work for you to understand how covariance works in TypeScript, I would love to hear them because this is something I've been kind of trying to learn better recently. I've been trying to really like grok recently and the box analogy is the best I've got so far. So if you have something better, please do let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon.